Good morning boys. Once again, welcome back to the teaching and learning of biology. Today, we'll be starting with lesson number two. And the name is classification of plants. But the topic is classification of plants. But before understanding and going into classification of plants, let us understand what is classification. Classification means classifying or grouping organism with similar characteristics in one group. That is the concept of classification. And this classification help us to understand and study about various organism which exist in an environment. Now this classification, there are certain advantages of classification. As we all are aware, there are lakhs and millions and millions and millions of organisms of species of animals and plants which exist. But is it, uh, can we study them one by one in terms of their characteristics, in terms of their properties? So the answer is no, we can't. So we need to study by having a systematic way of studying. And how does it go on? by organizing them in groups and this is what is known as classification so the first advantage of classification is that it helps us in making the study simpler and easier it helps in making the study simpler second thing understanding about each organism their evolution means from where they have evolved, what is the basic place from where it has been evolved. Evolution of an organism is also there with the help of classification. And the third is to make the study more systematic. Now these are the advantages of classification. If we classify certain organisms, living organisms, in groups, and if we study the characteristics and properties of an individual group, we will come to know about that will be common. Like for example, I'll give you the classification of mammals. Mammals is a group. It has cat, dog, cow, and human. Now, if you see the characteristics, they are all having a mammillary gland. It means the young one is feeded on the mother. They all give birth to the young ones. They do not lay eggs. Third, they show movement through locomotion. Like those two, three characteristics which I am sharing with you. It means the characteristic of mammalia, which is common for a human also, which is common for dog also, cow also. Now what I mean to say here, so if we study one group altogether, in a group, we can understand and we can make a study more simpler and systematic right now let us today we start our class by understanding certain things now first we'll understand how many like when we talk about classification today we'll study about classification of plants animals will do in the next class in classification of plants first we'll study before that we'll try to understand that entire and uh, kingdom is divided into how many parts what are the main division first is kingdom monera second is protista third is fungi next is plantae and last is animalia that is an animal group. Now these are the various uh, groups in which the entire kingdom of living organisms including plants is divided. Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. So we will study the characteristic of every part one by one with examples. So first we will start with the characteristics of Monera. Now when we talk about the kingdom Monera First and foremost thing is that they are unicellular. It means they have a single cell. They are single cell organism. And the second is they do not have a well-defined nucleus. 
they do not have a well defined nucleus including nuclear membrane is absent nuclear membrane is absent absent these are the major characteristics of a group monera number 1 they are unicellular microscopic organism number 2 they do not have a well defined nucleus the nuclear membrane which is inside which the nucleus is enclosed is absent and it has the the absence of cell organelles means no cell organelles present no cell organelles present it means cell organelles as i discussed in my previous class as i told you cell has various organs living organs like mitochondria golgi bodies endoplasmic reticulum now they are also absent in the group monera so these are the characteristics of monera and the example is very uh, very easy example which you can remember is bacteria and algae these are the two major examples of the group monera now let us study and understand about some uh, uh, idea about bacteria now when we talk about bacteria we need to understand that bacteria are microscopic in nature means you cannot see from your naked eye and more than that they have they are prokaryotic in the cells of bacteria are prokaryotic in nature they have a well defined nucleus with cytoplasm they do not have a fixed shape and structure and the cell membrane inside outside the cell membrane you have pseudopodia which keeps on moving which helps in the locomotion of amoeba they also the pseudia pseudopodia also helps in engulfing the food and digesting the food inside the amoeba now when we talk about bacteria um, bacteria are of many shapes the first one we call it coccus from the name we derive the shape coccus means spherical in shape spherical in shape is known as coccus the second one is bacillus means rod shaped bacteria spherical is like this see sphere in the form of sphere bacillus is like this is rod shape and the third one is spirulum spirulum means that it is having a spiral shape bacteria now see like a spiral and the last one is vibrio vibrio means comma comma shape they are like this these are the four type of shapes and structures of bacteria cocci means spherical example is staphylococcus aureus streptococcus aureus then bacillus means rod shape bacilli lactic acid bacillus bacilli word means it's in a rod shape then you have spirulum spiral right then the last one is vibrio comma shape vibrio means vibrio cholerae it means the shape of the bacteria of cholera is in a shape of comma now the next one which we are going to discuss here is about like we discussed about the bacteria let us discuss about the other other one that is the structure of a bacteria now see this is the bacterial cell this is cell wall cell membrane then you have a nucleus you have a cytoplasm you have a nucleus membrane you have a cytoplasm you have a cell wall this is cell membrane then you have a cell wall this is nucleus right this is how is the structure of a bacteria now most of the bacteria they are unicellular they have no nucleus membrane means nucleus is directly poured in, inside the bacteria there is no nucleus membrane present mitochondria and plastids are also absent you do not have a mitochondria and i as i discussed with you earlier plastids are the ones organelles which are present only in the plant cell and not in the animal cell and the last one is they preserve food in times of glycogen 
that is they engulf food and convert it into a form of glycogen which they store it and use it in their energetic process. Now the next group we will discuss here today is before going to the other group let us understand some useful bacteria and some harmful bacteria. For some useful bacteria, where are the bacteria useful to a mankind? Number one is medicines. Lot of antibiotics have been created with the help of bacteria. We also have lactic acid bacillus for converting milk into curd. That is also a bacteria. Retting of fibers. You take the conversion of the jute into fiber form. Then we have tanning of leather. It is kept for a long time. Bacteria act upon it eat up the rough, rough part or the dirty part and clean up the leather that is retting even compositing you have compositing like biodegradable waste you dump it into the soil the compositing is done by bacteria biogas which is been after compositing the gas which is released is biogas this is also a part or the help of the bacteria and lastly rhizobium bacteria because this bacteria is available in root nodules of leguminous plants example p they have a cluster like root nodules now when this root nodule burst open like this see the structure is like this in the roots of a leguminous plant you have a root nodules these are the nodules now these nodules contain a bacteria known as rhizobium bacteria now this bacteria, when this root nodule, they burst open, they release this rhizobium bacteria into the soil. Now this bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen or the nitrogen available in the soil into nitrates. Now this nitrates help in increasing the fertility of the soil. Right? Now these are the useful bacteria. Now some of the harmful bacteria that spoilage of food, which is very common. And the next one is various diseases which are caused by bacteria. We suffer from various type of infections like typhoid, you have jaundice. Jaundice is a viral disease. Well, typhoid, you have pneumonia, you have tuberculosis, you have skin infection, you have respiratory infection, so many infections together. Now, let us study about the kingdom protesta.